Most basketball players growing up could only dream of being listed as the number one overall player in the country. That is such a prestigious and high honor. Only one person every single year can say they was the number one player. But however, with that being said, the player we're going to be talking about in today's video was the number one player for almost three years. He had all the attention in the world and all eyes were on him. He was ranked number one for very good reason. The gap between him and the number two spot wasn't even close. Growing up, he was what I like to call a man child out there amongst boys. When you watched the mixtapes or saw him play against the competition, it was easy to see and it was clear to see why he was ranked number one. What he was doing was something that we really haven't seen before. And in today's video, we're going to talk about arguably the greatest and probably the strangest high school basketball story of all time. This story is going to be no other than the rise and fall of Kyrie Walker. All I'm going to say is, this is going to be a really good one. Now, here's the thing, before we get into it, I need to state this. A lot of you watching this, and most people out there, they know the obvious things and the obvious facts. He was number one, and he sort of fell off. But, what you don't know is what we're going to talk about in this video. There was a lot of variables and stuff going on behind the scenes that nobody tells you. And what we're going to do in this video is go behind the scenes and look at everything that nobody has really talked about with Kyrie. I'm excited for this one. I hope you guys enjoy. We're on the road 200k, so if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's dive into the story. Growing up, Kyrie was always looked at as a really good basketball player, but it really didn't start to get big until the year 2015 and 16. This is when, quote unquote, he was the best eighth grader in the country. In just 8th grade, he had the body build and player build of an NBA player. On most recruiting websites, he was listed as 6'5 or 6'6 six six and roughly 205 pounds. Obviously, he was a 5 star recruit because he was the number one player. Like I stated earlier in this video, I referred to him as a man child, but I can't take credit for that because all the recruiting analysts out there referred to him as that first. In 2016, here's what a recruiting coach had to say after watching him for the first time. The 6'5 wing is simply a man child at the middle school level. He could have been playing varsity basketball and excelling. For the past two years, based on his frame and development, He's an explosive leaper who uses his body to get to the rim and finish against defenders. While his jump shot is still evolving, he's made significant strides in the past year with his consistency. Just from that quote, you can tell that there was a lot of praise coming from him. What really separated him from everyone else in his class is the fact that he didn't have a weakness. With most middle schoolers, you can see the potential, but there's also a lot in their game that hasn't even developed. For Walker though, that just wasn't the case. He had the game of a high school senior in just 8th grade. Yes, you can make an argument and say his jump shot needed work, but it was good for his age. There was no knock in his game in 2016. He was the definition of elite. As a 14 year old, he was the number one player in the country, and as a 15 year old, he remained at number one. When he was in 8th grade and going into 9th grade too, he played against high schoolers on the AAU level, so he was prepared for it. And if you were curious, one of the main middle school teams he played for in AAU was a team known as the Oakland Soldiers. This was a great team and he also got a lot of recognition from playing with them. Flash forward in time to his freshman year of high school basketball, he wound up playing for a Catholic high school in Hayward, California. Going into that freshman year, he was the number one player in the country and all eyes were on him and people were expecting him to disappoint or have a drop off season. Unfortunately for the haters, I have some bad news for you. That didn't happen. He not only lived up to, but I think he exceeded the expectations. For his ninth grade year on varsity, he averaged a whopping 21.3 points per game, 6.5 rebounds, and 4 assists. This was good enough to lead his team to a second place finish in their league, and he was also named the Max Preps National Freshman of the Year. So at this point in time in our story, let's do a little brief update. The entire season of eighth grade, he was number one and for the next year of ninth grade he was still number one so that's two full years of being ranked at the top spot if you gotta ask me that's a pretty big deal because most times you see that spot flip around i gotta give credit where credit is due he held it down after his sensational freshman season, he wound up transferring for his sophomore year. The school he transferred to was known as Hillcrest Prep in Phoenix, Arizona. At the time, a lot of people were questioning this, and rightfully so. 
why would you transfer from a school where you just was named player of the year? Things seemed really good at his old school, but his dad was named to the coaching staff at this new school, so that was the reason why. When you transfer to a other school, it's really hard to get into the flow of the system within one season. Therefore, once again, this is when the haters and critics came back out. A lot of people were questioning how he's going to develop at another school, is he going to take a drop in points, and all that good stuff. And well, his school may have changed, but his numbers didn't. For his sophomore season, he improved his numbers to 25 points per game, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds. Nobody really cares about these numbers, but I thought they were impressive. He also pitched in a ton on the defensive side of the ball. He averaged 2.7 steals per game and 2.4 blocks. Man, just looking at those numbers again, that is unreal for a 10th grader. 25 points, 8 assists, 8 rebounds, 3 steals, and almost 3 blocks per game. Wow, this dude could hoop, there's no other way to say it. At this point in time too, he was still looked at as one of the top players, so now he's on a three year stretch. And the stretch I'm talking about is being that number one player. Here's where our story really starts to get interesting. Going into his junior season, all the critics really went away. He overcame a ton of adversity and he's proven them wrong every single opportunity. And after putting up what I would like to call a ridiculous stat line for his sophomore season, his junior season got even better. In just 24 games played, that's key because we'll touch on that in a minute, he averaged 30.2 points per game. 30.2 points per game. That's crazy. He also pitched in 5.9 assists, 11 rebounds, 3.4 steals, and 2 blocks. Those numbers right there speak for themselves. I don't have to say too much about them. At this point in time, midway through his junior season people weren't just talking about him being a one and done people were talking about how good he's gonna be at the NBA level let's look at the facts when you got a six foot six 210 pound athletic freak that can shoot the three ball why wouldn't you he was literally primed and looking like the next great NBA player and if you think otherwise you're just completely wrong but however, this is where our story takes one of the biggest turns in high school basketball history. Late in his junior season in a game against Fast Break Prep, this is where his career and life would change forever. It was Hillcrest Prep senior night and he was just a junior, but he was going on to say that this was probably his last high school game there. Quote unquote, here's what he had to say. Most likely, I'm posting my last game here at Hillcrest as a player. I don't know what's going to happen after AAU season is over with, I haven't decided yet, but probably this is my last game. When he said that quote, it kind of went over everybody's head because they didn't believe him. Nobody understood why or what he meant by that because he was just a junior so why would that be his last high school game? It's not like you can go to the NBA after your junior season in high school. What was even more strange about that quote when he said it at the time was that, like I stated, nobody said anything about it. Like I said earlier in this video, there was things going on behind the scenes that nobody even knew about. And what was going on behind the scenes that unfortunately, Barisa Gardner, who is his mother, was diagnosed with cancer in May. Here's what Kyrie had to say about the cancer situation. Just the fact I was trying to hoop and still be successful messed up the way I played in a huge way. Before we go any farther, I just wanna say real quick that I don't know how it is currently to this date because I couldn't find any information, but my prayers and thoughts go out to his mom and Kyrie and everyone involved in that mess. From a personal standpoint, I know how it is to have a family member with cancer. It's not fun and it's a hard time for everyone involved. Once again, my prayers are going to you, Kyrie, and your mom, and I hope everyone's doing better now. Back on topic with Kyrie, though, this really seemed like it was bothering him behind the scenes. All we were seeing was that a guy was dominating the middle school and high school level and putting up absurd numbers. But, behind the scenes, he was dealing with some serious family problems. And about all this being really hard on Kyrie, here's what his mom had to say about it. Quote unquote, it was a very difficult thing for a kid to go through. I think that's what people sometimes lose sight of with Kyrie that he's still a kid. He's achieved a lot and done a lot within an amateur basketball, but he's still a kid. Even if you knew that, here's something that you may not have known that was also going on behind the scenes. He wasn't just dealing with his mom getting cancer, he was also dealing with his grandfather passing away only three months earlier. That was the second grandparent that Kyrie lost in the last couple of years. So within the span of just two years, he was dealing with the death of two family members and his mom getting cancer. 
That's unreal and crazy. That's why I'm so big on just being nice to people because you never know what anybody's going through. If you wave at somebody, that could just make their day. Mentally, it was getting to Kyrie. And if you don't want to take my word for it, how about you take his? This is what he had to say. I didn't play so good and I take that on me. My grandmother and my grandfather had passed away in the last two years, so I've gone through that. So having my mom have breast cancer, it messed me up in a huge way mentally. It showed, it showed. Even though we didn't know what was going on, his coach could see that it was affecting him. His head coach at the time known as Howard Thomas said that he could see in the way he was practicing and things were affecting him. He even went on record to say that he had to change the way he approached and coached Kyrie. Quote unquote, there's pressure on him to be Kyrie every time out. When he's not Kyrie, people are looking like, oh, what happened? He didn't perform last night. That's facts. Everybody wants to be the number one player or have all that clout and attention until you have to perform every single time. And if you don't, people are going to joke on you. I don't think some of you quite understand that the lifestyle that these players live. Yes, they're going to get praised, but they're also going to get criticized. Everybody says they want to be this star or live that lifestyle, but maybe you should reconsider it. With Kyrie and his family and his mom going through that, here's what he said she told him to do. She told me everything was going to be fine. She told me just to go out there and hoop, do what you can do. I'm going to be fine here, waiting for you, supporting you. Also adding, I try my best to go out there every time and just hoop, just go out there and kill. Even though his mom told him to go out there and not worry and play basketball, it was obvious that it was still lingering in the back of his head. If you don't have an idea of just how great of a person Kyrie is, just listen to what this coach had to say. I wish people had more of an opportunity to be around him because he's such a great kid. When he reads stuff about him online, it depresses him. I'm like, hey man, you can't let all that stuff get to you. Man, you just gotta dial in and be the best version of Kyrie. It's not always what you're doing wrong, it's somebody's opinion. I really love that quote, that is so great. And for Kyrie, I feel like he takes that advice because he gets a lot of hate for no reason. With this junior year ending in what I would like to call a weird fashion, he was still looked at as a top player. It wasn't until his senior year when the fall in the rankings and the fall on social media and everywhere else really started to happen. Like Kyrie stated as a junior, that was his last game for Hillcrest Prep, but he didn't intend on it being his last game of high school basketball. Flash forward in time to October 25th in 2019, this is when he officially left Hillcrest Prep. And then in that same year, in December of 2019, this is when he officially graduated from high school. So for his entire senior season, he didn't play a game of high school basketball. He was focused on moving on to college or playing at the professional level. But here's the big, 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 big problem with that. When a player does not play for an entire season, a lot of things happen. One, obviously they fall in the rankings. Two, everyone forgets about them. And three, people start to talk bad about them. By saying people like to talk bad about them, I mean people say they fell off. What makes his story so different is because it wasn't like he got hurt for a season and that's why normally players fall. It was because he wasn't playing. And when you're not playing, you can't go up in the rankings, and if you're not going up, the only way is down. I know what you're sitting there thinking, yo Matt, how would people forget about this guy? He was the number one player. Well, my answer to that question is, they really didn't forget about him, there was just nothing to talk about because he wasn't playing basketball. And for behind the scenes, what was going on was he was dealing with some personal problems. His mom was going through some stuff, he was getting ready for college and the professional level, and he was also dealing with the death in the family. There was a lot on his plate at the time and he was really stressed out. I mean, who wouldn't be? There was just so much going on. A lot of people try to say he just quit playing, but that was most certainly not the case because this dude loves the game. You can tell by the way he plays, he's got that passion and what I like to say, that dog in him. He's got that killer mentality and I absolutely love it. Since he didn't play his senior season, when that season was over, and for high school, he had one big decision to make. And that decision was no other than to play either Division I basketball or choose the G League or a different pro route. Obviously, for college basketball, he had offers from almost every school in the country. As crazy as this story is, his recruiting for college was fairly simple. On June 30th in 2017, he committed to Arizona State, but shortly Shortly after, on the 21st of October in 2018, he decommitted. And then the big decision that everybody was waiting for, on April 20th in 2020, 
he announced that he would forego college basketball and choose the pro route. And that pro route that he decided to choose was to join the training program known as the Chameleon BX. I'm not going to lie, I did a lot of research and I still really don't know too much about what that program is. All I could get from it was that basically they prepare these players for the NBA. If you know more about the program he joined, let me know in the comment section, but all I gathered from it was that basically it's sort of like another version of a G League team. It's just another program and a way to get you ready for the NBA. There's no other way to say it, so you get the point. Things haven't really worked out for him there because you see all of his other buddies like Jalen Green and the other players that went to the G League are getting paid 500 k and they're thriving and they're more than likely going to be lottery picks. Just for example, some brief names like Jalen Green, Jonathan Kaminga, and Isaiah Todd. Those are some of the players that took the G League route and it's really paying off for them. On the flip side, the route that he's chosen really hasn't been as effective. One of the main reasons for that is because when you go to the G League, you're still playing on some TV and these NBA teams and scouts are looking at you. Whereas for the program he joined, there's no real connections. There is some connections and he does have NBA connections and people that are in the system, but in the G League, obviously there's more. Our story doesn't even just end there. If things couldn't get any crazier, they may get crazier. I don't like to put stuff in videos where I can't confirm it or have a legit source, but apparently there's news and rumors going around that Kyrie Walker is maybe going to play in college next season. Do not take my word for that because I don't like to put stuff in videos when I can't confirm it and I can't confirm that, but I'm putting it in here because I've heard that rumor. It could be more than just a rumor because that seems like a great option for him right now. Obviously, he's not going to get drafted in this up and coming draft. And it seems like his ultimate goal is to eventually get to the NBA one day. So, theoretically, if he wants to do that, he either needs to A, go to college and get some recognition, maybe get March Madness, turn up and have a great season, and then he could get to the league. Or he could go to the G League like his buddies did and get there that way, but. I don't think that's a good option because the G League is what I like to call a death spiral. Once you get into the G League, if you're not projected to be a lottery pick, it's hard to get out. Two, here's where the conversation really, and I mean really, gets interesting. The difference between the NFL and the MLB and the NBA is this one simple thing. The NBA is big on taking young players. A 22 year old in the NFL is considered young, where a 22 year old in the NBA is considered pretty old. I don't know why it's that way, but it is. And right now when I'm making this video, Kyrie Walker is already 20, and by November 20th, he's going to be 21. He's running out of time. He needs to speed up the process. I understand he went through some stuff, but that's no excuse at this point. That happened years ago. You can struggle and be depressed then, but now you got to get on your grind. He's had some unfortunate circumstances, but here's the thing. Everybody deals with something. You just got to fight over it and get through it, and I think he will. If he does this college route, like I said, or even the G League route, let's just look at this. Let's say he goes to college next season, and has a great year he'll be 21 and by the time the next NBA draft comes around he'll be 22 and that's if he has a great college season if he's in college for let's say two years by the time he goes to the NBA draft he'll be almost 23 same thing for the G League. If he goes there next year and gets drafted, he'll be roughly 21-22. And then if he stays there for two years, he'll be 23. I know he's 20 and he seems young, but for NBA standards, he's not that young. If he doesn't act fast, his NBA dreams are going to go away as quickly as his number one ranking did. Those dreams are currently still alive, but the time's ticking. Also, too, to go along with all of this, a lot of you have DM'd me and told me that he streams on Twitch. I don't watch any twitch so i wouldn't know and i've never seen him stream before a lot of you tell me he does though so that's pretty cool that he's doing that and he's finding some other hobbies i just find it really ironic and sort of funny that the number one player in middle school and high school for years now streams on twitch it's pretty cool if you ask me let me know in the comment section what you think about this entire story this has been one of the longest stories we've ever done on my channel but there was a lot to it i hope you enjoyed and this was the rise and fall of Kyrie walker before I end this video off, I just want to say that I got a lot of respect for Kyrie. It's all love and respect. At the end of the day, I'm just putting out this story for you guys to watch. And if anyone can have a rise back up to the top, I think he's one of those guys. 
Hopefully in the future, we have a video where it's the rise, fall, and rise again of Kyrie Walker. Another thing too, Kyrie, I know you're probably watching this. I know a lot of people, they're not on the bandwagon right now, but if you do get back up top, a lot of people are gonna try to hop on. So don't let them. I'm wishing Kyrie the best of luck in his basketball career or whatever he chooses to do. Hope he's successful and my prayers and thoughts go out to him. But with that being said, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you're new to the channel, what are you doing? Join the family. We're on the road to 100K. We can't get there without you. I'd appreciate it if you join the family. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a like for more. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.